It's five o'clock with an echo, 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 echo. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today. Is everybody out there? How you doing? Say hello. And welcome to the new year. Happy new year, everybody. First event of the year for DTS. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope you're off to a good start this year. This will be a really good event, I think, for everybody. I'm going to get right started with it because it's a lot of information. I like to keep these to an hour and it will be a little bit of a difficult job doing that. This is that opening slide. What I want to kind of emphasize here is that I think this is a really great event for anybody, even if you're not a day trader, because, you know, to me, there's very little difference between day trading and long term investing. I mean, the charts you read are exactly the same. The, the only thing that's really different is, you know, just the time frame you're on, the urgency, maybe that type of stuff. But the mental process, the thought process, the things that all matter are all really the same. So number one, if you never plan on day trading, I still think it's worth a listen to you because the concepts are all very pertinent, I think, across the board. If you ever are going to consider day trading, I think you'd be interested in listening to it because if you've never tried day trading or I hear so many people are afraid of it because they have these pictures of, you know, people sitting at the desk with a bottle underneath their legs and an IV unit running in their arm and they're frantically, you know, withering away, sweating at everything. That's not at all what I do. Uh, everybody knows that in the room. The best part of the room is me telling jokes most of the morning. And I'm only at the screen about, I don't know, how, how long am I at the screen? I mean, 90 minutes maybe. And then another 20 minutes throughout the rest of the day, just checking in on things. So I, I, I look at it as a relaxed way. And it's not the only way. There's different ways you can day trade. And I appreciate people who are a little more scalpy and are taking, you know, 10, 20 trades a day. If you're making money, whatever works, if you can do it consistently, that's great. There's a lot of different things to do. But if you are currently day trading, you'll love this. And this is not a plug for the room. I'm going to go through what we do in the room, but this is just for anybody who's out there day trading. I think you get a lot of great tips because I'm going to go through really exactly what I do, probably in a level of detail, in a level of detail I haven't ever done before. So let's go through exactly what we're going to do here. Just a reminder, coming up Saturday, I'm going to do a little coffee at DTS to start off the year. You'll get invitations for that probably tonight or tomorrow, just to remind you. It's always a very popular event, half hour or 40 minutes tops. Usually I don't plan any topics, just kind of off the top of my head and or take questions, that type of thing. Day trading makes most people hyperventilate in my observations. <laughs> I know, I agree. That's the, the uh, impression I have from people. If I talk to somebody sometime and I ask if they're long term or day trading and they go, oh, no, I'm not going to day trade. It's like they're just instantly afraid of it. Well, you know, if you go read the Internet, people will sit there. Oh, I lost my whole account day trading and it's all baloney and blah, blah, blah. So obviously it's a stupid comment. Somebody's making the money, right? It doesn't go into a black hole. It changes hands. It goes from those who don't know to those who do know. That's all it is. It's a zero sum game. So it's kind of ridiculous to say nobody, right? Isn't that a silly comment? Nobody, nobody makes money day trading. It's kind of a stupid comment. Of course somebody does. Here's what we're going to go through today. Four categories. Prep for the day, prep for the open, psych for the day, and a day in the DTS trading room. This is a very detailed and well-planned out presentation. So sit back and enjoy. So here we are. Prep for the day. See the title there? That's how you know what we're doing. Prep for the day. So when I get ready for every day, I know this is going to sound like a lot, but I want to tell you right up front, it takes me about 30 minutes. So when you go through this and for somebody who's brand new, you may think this is hours and hours of work, but a lot of people in the room that are here with me tonight, they'll attest. I mean, you can do all this stuff in 30 minutes if you get good at it and you want to. And you know what, whatever I'm about to show you, you don't have to do that much. When I tell you I scan a thousand stocks, well, you can scan 200, you know, it just, kind of the bigger, the, the little trading tip down here is the first thing I want to point out. The bigger the input at the top, the better the results at the bottom. I don't know how you can argue with that. A lot of things I like to do when I teach is to not express opinions, but rather state or prove hard facts, right? It's, it's hard to deny that in any industry in the world, right? The more input at the top, you filter through, the better results are going to be at the bottom, right? If you're trying to get a football team together for college, for college right? If you're allowed to go to 12 high schools, you're going to have a pretty lousy team. If you're allowed to go to every high school in the United States, you're going to have a really good team. Why? Because you have a thousand times the potential football players to pick from. So it's the same thing in the market, in my view. The other thing I want to point out is that this is what I do personally. 
this is not like the law. This is not like if you read the summary of the trading gods, this is what you do. This is what I do. And naturally you can change, adjust, do whatever you want to. But I wanna give you some sense of what goes into the typical trading day for me. By the way, along the way, any questions, comments, feel free. That's what we're here for. Okay, so first thing I do to prep for the day is look at a bunch of daily charts. It says there, yes, we are not day trading, but the daily trend, a great trend on the daily chart, that higher time frame, is a picture of power. It's a technical term I use that has the intraday flow in the right direction. Now, not every nice daily chart is going to lend itself to being a good intraday chart. They're not always set up right. But if you have that flow going up or down or whatever it is, or very clear sideways pattern, when that intraday pattern matches up, you're going to get a better result because you remember, the day traders are, you know, they're the day traders. The, the real power in the market is not coming from, you know, people just bouncing things back and forth. It's coming from the bigger picture patterns from the, the funds that are buying stocks longer term. That's where the bigger moves come. So if you can catch those type of moves, you're going to get bigger moves and bigger moves means bigger dollars, everything else being equal. Scan your universe of stocks. How many is up to you? You can filter stocks over whatever price you want over so much volume. My, my scan I use for the bigger picture is scans like over, um, well, for the biggest picture, when I'm looking long-term, I go over 500,000 in volume. And I think I have two and a half bucks for the minimum price. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. And then for day trading, I use a slightly smaller list that I think I keep the average volume around a million or something like that. So it gives me about a thousand stocks that changes from time to time. If you don't want to scan for a group of stocks, just use the S&P 500. If you're just starting off, use the NASDAQ 100, use the Wilshire 2000, use whatever you want. Now, a question comes up a lot. I, I do have scans. I've used scans in the past to look for certain things. I generally don't scan to find my list because the pictures that I have learned to look for are not easy to scan for. So I just like to look at the charts and to find the, the patterns that I love. What am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for the pictures that I have come to recognize as being good technical chart patterns. It's what I teach, it's what I do to look for those. That's, what, that's not what tonight is about. This is just, here's how we structure, how we, here's how we prepare. That is part of you know the seminar program, what to look for. It's a big topic. It's not just something you, you spit out in five or six lines or in, in 10 minutes. But whatever it is you're looking for, if you're somebody that's already trained or you know what you wanna do, or you feel confident in your trading ability, you have a picture of what you're looking for, right? There's a certain stock pattern or, or different stock patterns, different concepts, strategies that you are looking for to get the right setups that you want. I certainly have my favorites. So select the nice dailies, but remember that a nice daily may or may not have a good intraday pattern for day trading. Sometimes they're just not set up right for day trading. And if you're wondering how could that possibly be, well, I'll give you a, a great example. If you have a, a daily, let's say you're scanning and you see a daily chart, and let's say it has this, here I'm drawing on the screen, here's this big green daily bar, right? Bigger than usual. Wow, the thing was falling, was in an uptrend, it fell to some support area. Here's this big bar, what a great daily chart. Okay, that may be, but the intraday pattern inside of that, when you look, it may have formed like this, A, or it may have formed like this, B. Quick quiz question, which one would you prefer as a day trader, A or B? Same daily chart, that's the same daily chart. Here's the intraday pattern, A or B. What would you prefer, A or B? There's an absolute answer to this question and the other answer is just wrong, period. There is no debate about it. Yeah, A is the answer, yeah, B is wrong. A is the only answer that there is. B is terrible. B is the type of chart pattern you can say, okay, that's a great daily chart, then maybe it'll be good for tomorrow or maybe you're good for this afternoon, but it's not set up right for the morning at all. So that's what we look for on the daily chart, bigger picture time frame. That's the first thing I go through and scan. Here is um, what I do it on. Now again, this is just me. I'm not at all teaching this is what you should do. This is Telechart 2000. I only use this to look at daily charts. Why have I done that? Because I literally started using this my first month of trading a bazillion years ago. It's been around since then. As a matter of fact, I still use I still use the same version. It's version seven and they're on version 15 or something because all this is is just static daily charts at the end of the day. That's all it is. It, it costs 29 bucks a month or something. So it's not live, this version, I only use it for, and the reason I use this for daily charts 
is because I can go super fast. It downloads the charts to my uh, hard drive, and I can go through literally three per second if I wanted to, and I do about two per second. So I can go. If you use a big platform and scan at night, it's very slow. You're lucky to get one stock per second. It's way too slow. So that's why I use this. That's why I still use it. You don't have to. I look at about 1,000 stocks. It takes me about 15 minutes or so, okay? All right, so, and then in here, you know, just for fun, this is like what I set up. So there's my universe of stocks. You see up there my little universe of stocks? It says PL Watch. That's me, PL. And then here's what it is. It's, it's um, stock price 336 to infinity. So that's just what the settings I have here. And a little tip, I, I, when I have my watch list, I do not want the ETFs in there. You know what the ETFs are? They're like the QQQ, the SPY. There's hundreds and hundreds of them. When I want to look at the sectors, I'm going to go look at sectors. When I'm scanning, I want to look for unique stocks. I don't want to see the QQQ and the SMH and all. So I eliminate those. And the way you can eliminate those is to require um, an EPS date or something. I forgot what I even did here. Since the ETFs do not have earnings, if you require an EPS date or whatever I did, I even forgot what it was. It'll, it'll eliminate those. So there's daily charts. And I end up, when I scan a 1,000 charts, how many daily charts do I typically flag? Anybody want to take a guess? Some of you know the answer to this because it's something I talk about a lot. How many daily, scanning 1,000 charts, how many, start, how many charts do I flag as possibilities to look at for the next day as a day trade? Yeah, usually 20, 25, exactly, 20, 25. And of those, I probably throw out six or seven the next morning. And of those, maybe a couple become really good candidates for the next day. Is that worth it? Absolutely. 20, 30 minutes to find two stocks and one of them becomes a winner for the next day. That's what this is all about, trying to find a couple of winning stocks every day. That's all it really is to me. So I look for those pictures that I recognize. So next, the second thing I do then is go and scan through hourly charts. Now here, this is the most significant time frame to me. The hourly 50 minute chart is the key chart to any day trader. Th this is the world according to Paul, but it's also the world according to any trader. If you wanna make money intraday, you have to respect the 60. The 15 minute chart is very close to the 60, but the 60, 15, 30 minute chart, they rule the day trading world. So number one, if you are more of a laid back trader like I am structurally, those are the charts you get your strategies from, a 15 minute whatever. Also, whatever you are, I don't care if you're a two minute scalper, you have to use that 15 minute slash 60 minute chart as your bias. You should never be trading against that bias. So very important time frame here. Now for here, what I do is I go through a list of 300 stocks. These stocks here, I just wanna get the higher volume ones because I'm doing most of my trading the opening hour and a lot of stocks, a lot of times I'm taking something the opening couple of minutes. So you have to have decent volume to do that. A lot of stocks that are maybe tradable at 10 o'clock, everything's a little thinner at the open. It's a little sketchier. So you kind of want those bigger. So the top 300 stocks, generally anything on there is going to be pretty tradable at the open. So I keep a 300 list. All that 300 list is, is simply the 300 highest volume stocks the day I pulled the list. And then I eliminate some stuff because I don't, there's like 30 or 40 oil stocks in there. I don't want 30 or 40 oil stocks. So I eliminate some of those and et cetera, et cetera. That's just your personal discretion. And I also update every six weeks because, you know, you get hot stocks that come in the market for a while and then they fizzle away. So if you, if you update every six weeks, you'll find that about, um, you know, 25% of that list will change every six weeks. And again, I'm looking for those patterns that I recognize. Now, this is where I find most of my stuff on the hourly chart scan. And this probably takes me about as long to do the 300 hourly charts as it does to do the 1,000 daily charts because it's three times slower because I'm going through this on a major platform, which is a lot slower. So the hourly charts, and again, the key thing, the whole thing to making money, I'm going through structure of how to organize yourself and what's involved in day trading, but the key to making money is it's too much to type or to ask somebody to fill in the blank. It's knowing what the heck you're looking for and how to trade. That's the whole key. So when I do this, I'm looking for specific setups that I've come to know and to love that can make money. And I look typically for my favorites. I probably have, you know, 
a couple dozen things I could do, but four or five things that it really come down to as being my favorite bread and butter type of things. And that's just personal style. Here's the window that I'm looking at when I am doing my hourly chart scans. This is the list of 300 stocks right here. There's the 300 list. So some of them are off the screen. You can see the scroll bar here. It's only about a quarter of them, whatever it is. And then when I am scanning, I'm going through, and these are the time frames I'm looking at to make my determination. If I'm looking intraday, I'm looking at a smaller time frame chart, like a five or a 15, I'm looking at the 60. I'm looking at the daily, and I have the weekly here. I don't want to get too into this. The weekly chart is not critical, but sometimes to understand the daily, you need to look at the weekly. And I don't want to get into that right now. It's not very relevant, but those are the, the four time frames I care about when I'm looking for potential day trades. Remember, structurally, me personally, I'm looking for setups kind of on a 15-minute chart. That's why I'm doing structurally. You don't have to do that. You can look for things on a five-minute chart, on a two-minute chart. I am taking most of my entries off of a one-minute chart, but the structure for me, the setup, comes from a 60 or a 15. A lot of people don't understand that when they hear me talk about it or when they see me trade. It's a little different than what most people are taught. To me, if you have a strategy and the entry is it built into the strategy, you're not gonna make money probably. I have different st strategic, structural concepts and then different entry concepts. So I'll often be taking an entry on a one minute chart to a 60 minute type of setup. That's just the way that I trade. So hourly charts, very key. Here I probably find, I'm gonna say 15 stocks every day. 15, probably as a pr good, probably a good rough average number, 15. So I got 20 daily charts, 15 hourly charts. And once I have that, that is the prep for the day. So that's kind of what I do. I, I, I've been doing it at night and I used to send these watch lists, the daily and hourly out to everybody at night. This, the end of the year, this year, I kind of changed. I said, I kind of would rather do this in the morning and just kind of finish up these lists at eight o'clock and open the room. So. I've not generally been sending the lists out anymore to um, the room members. I do sometimes if I do them at night, I do typically over the weekend because I do my lists on Sunday over the weekend, typically Sunday morning. So I, I do this in the morning and have it done by, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock. It depends what my schedule is. I may do it late the night before. It depends what I'm doing. I don't really keep a very rigid schedule personally. I'm kind of all over the map. So once that's done now, to me, now we're prepping for the open. So everything I've talked about so far could be done at night. I used to do it at night. I still do it at night sometimes. So now we start prepping for the open. So I have those two lists already, and now we have to add something new, the gap list. The gap lists aren't available until eight o'clock at the earliest. Remember, anytime I mention time, I'm talking stock market time. So the market opens at 9.30. Gap lists start to be available at eight o'clock as the pre-market opens. I typically don't start to look at the gap list until about 8.30, 8.40, something like that. Significant gaps are unique and present their own trading possibilities. Gaps are different than regular trades. You have to look at them differently. Significant gaps. Gaps are rated in tiers. No matter how good you are at reading a chart, a gap is something different to analyze. It doesn't follow the rules because it teleports, if you will, to the new spot rather than trading there, and there's a big difference when that happens. Get your gap list from your trading platform. They show up pre-market trading at 8.30, but it can change all the way up until open, and some don't show up until the open. So remember, we're kind of getting a feel for where things are gonna open during the pre-market, but they can change. So just because it's gapping up $2 at 8.30 doesn't mean it's gonna gap up $2 at 9.30. But the best we can do is go through and see what we have available. It looks like what's probably gonna gap. Most of the time where it's gapping pre-market stays pretty consistent, but sometimes it doesn't. And then some, some things don't gap until open. Some things will not gap until absolute open. There's a, there's a way you can catch some of those. If you use a scan that looks at the current bid versus yesterday's closing price, because sometimes things are bid above yesterday's price or they're offered out below yesterday's price, but nobody's trading them yet because they're, they're too spready, so they don't trade. But when they open, they're gonna gap. If somebody's bidding for something at 21, and it closed at 20, and nobody's selling to that person, guess what? It's gonna open above 21 somewhere because nobody's even willing to sell at 21. Gap list, very important part of the morning for me, day trading. And then after I do the gap list, I do what I call the mini gappers. These are my favorite strategies. 
And mini gappers are what, if you know some gap lingo, you may know them as continuation gaps. They're not significant gaps, they're non-significant gaps, but they simply are kind of gapping to continue. They're gapping into a strategy. They're gapping into some kind of strategic concept. And these are my favorite things because big gaps become very imprecise. They, they can have great moves, but they're more difficult to trade because if you gap up $7 and you're in the clear blue sky, how do you know necessarily where to get in, where your stop is, where's the target? It all becomes a little vaguer. When you have a very clean, precise chart with a very small gap, but powerful, it becomes a very important pattern to me. So these are always my favorite. So I go through and just take that 300 list and I just sort it by percent change on day. Some platforms have a gap number, whatever you want to call it. The percent change of day typically is including the pre-market data. So when you see that, and by the way, these are not actually taken from the pre-market. I forgot to capture some for this presentation. I captured some of these things yesterday, some today. I totally forgot to capture the mini gap list. So I just, this is how I do it, but this is in the middle of the day. So there weren't that many things that had mini gaps, but it's the same concept. You look on here and typically the bigger gappers, like percent change, like anything above two and a half percent, I'm finding on the bigger gap list for me. And then here all the little mini gappers are, um, are showing up in here that are smaller gaps. So I'm just going to go through and look at those probably every morning. Now, between gaps, go back to gaps, gaps, it depends if we're in earnings season or not. During earnings season, my gap list, I may have to look at 100 gaps and end up with 10 or 15 up and 10 or 15 down. During non-earnings season, like we've been in, uh, I mean, as a matter of fact, earnings season kind of starts in two days. During non-earnings season, there may only be 20 gaps to look at, you know, on the whole thing, and none of them are any good. So it really just depends where you are in terms of how many. Mini gaps, I probably find every day f five, six, ten mini gaps that I add to the list. So mini gappers, there we go. That concludes the watch flow. So at this point now, to me, it's it's you know maybe ten to nine or something like that. I've already got my daily and hourly lists all put together, and now I've added the gap list. I typically add my mini gappers just to the gap list, even though they're they're kind of a different concept. There's one more thing we have to do, and that is to develop some kind of market bias. The market bias there is really a very, very important thing. As a matter of fact, I think the next slide has a little DTS trading tip on it, talking about this, but understanding the difference between market trades and unique trades, and then following your market bias and the timing of everything, to me is probably the most important element of being a successful day trader. You can come with the greatest list, whatever you think those are, and you can screw them up totally because you're entering at the wrong time. You're playing against a market that's moving in the wrong direction. You're ignoring a great trade because you think you don't want to trade against the market, but you don't understand it's a unique stock and you could have done it. So all of this becomes to me probably the most important thing. Market bias, understanding unique versus not unique, understanding the timing to figure out the market bias, right? Sean, hey, Sean, how you doing? Sean agrees totally. This is why, you know, so many people come to trading or come to day trading and they, they just get blown away and then they don't know, you know, they just don't know why and they just say, well, okay, this, this is garbage and it doesn't work. But there's a lot of little stuff to look at. It's not hard. It's not complicated. It, it, I say all the time, learning this requires the intelligence of a fifth grader. And I never mean to be demeaning when I say that but it's just the raw truth, right, Sean? Is there anything you do that a fifth grader couldn't learn, right? We're using simple math, observation, pictures. It's like watching cartoons. You're teaching, there you go. You have a fifth grade, it's hysterical. It's just a matter of learning it and, and you know, having, getting somebody to show it to you properly. And my big kick is lately has been these idiots that just go out on the internet and read stuff. I got to take a pause out for a minute because I'm going to probably spend a lot of time this weekend. I'm on LinkedIn. I, I don't like being on there. It's a stupid place to be. But what, what has happened was they sent me something about, uh, however they know, they're smart enough to know I do trading. And they sent me this thing about, uh, would you like to add a comment to this? And it was how to use moving averages in trading. And a couple of people had commented already. And the people that commented were complete morons. They're complete idiots. It's like, this is ridiculous. So I added some comments and I pretty much just ripped apart the people who made their comments because they're just completely wrong. There's, there's different styles of trading. 
Absolutely, there's different ways to make money, absolutely. But there are people that are just complete idiots, and these guys are idiots. And, I, and after I did that, I got a lot of comments, and people are reading my stuff, and now I've got like 12 different emails from LinkedIn saying, comment on this, so I'm going to probably go in there and rip to pieces everybody and just give comments on stuff. But the, the perception so many people have about trading is just so ridiculous, and it just this has been my peak for the last year is trying to convince people that if you're going to go get your education listening to some of these idiots on the internet, these are people that can't make money. So they go out and they talk on the internet and then people are listening to them. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's true, Frank. <laughs> that's, I always say, you know, I, I'm very thankful for these people that do that because that's how we make our money. But anyways, so market buy is very critical and all your market buys is, is just a chart reading of the market. For the market, I look at a combination of the QQQ and the SPY on a daily basis. If you're kind of new, the QQQ is the ETF for the NASDAQ 100. The SPY is the ETF for the S&P 500. So in other words, I'm looking at the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I also look at the IWM, that's the small caps, on, for a bigger picture. I don't look at that day-to-day. -day. I don't care about that for day trading. But uh, on a bigger picture, the IWM can be um, sometimes telling. It depends what it does. So market bias. After that now, we're kind of ready to sum the whole thing up, right? So now... I take and review all the lists. So this is kind of what my screen looks like. And I think this is from today. Yeah, this is from today. So 60 minute charts. Here's that 60 minute list that I do is right here, right? Here's the daily list I split into bullish and bearish. That's just the way I do it. The hourly list is just a mixture. I always tell people if you don't know what's bullish or bearish then don't bother looking at it. And then the gap up list and the gap down list. And the gap up and gap down includes the mini gappers. You can tell that like toast there was a 1.97 gap. That's a mini gap. C was a mini gap. Get all those together. And over here is the carry list. Now the carry list is anything that's really fantastic from today, but I couldn't trade it or I think it'll be a good trade in upcoming days. Like sometimes we get a gap that's just too far gone or something I may think be might be good in a few days. I'll put on the carry list and I look at this every morning too. And that's just kind of an accumulation of stuff that's good, but I couldn't use that day. So there's all the lists. And then what happens, of course, then I, I go through these then and I start saying, okay, which of these are the type of trades that I would want to do the opening 30 minutes, right? Yeah, I, I know. So Mirna said, I love the carry list. Let me make a little side note here. We talk about gaps and everybody loves gap trading and you can go, you know, everybody's teaching gap trading and blah, 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 blah. What's hysterical to me is some of the things that everybody raves about on gaps are the least popular things to me. They're the least popular thing because they're wide. I like the mini gaps. And the other thing I like is the carries. I like those really nice gaps oftentimes on day two or day three. That's when they're the most tradable. Sometimes they're just gone. Who cares? What's the blue and the yellow? The blue is the, see, it says, see right there, it says carry. It says right there on the top line, gap up, gap down. Carry, that's the carry list. Daily bull, daily bear, 60 minute. And then this is the hot list. One is always bullish, two is bearish. One is bullish, two is bearish. Don't you know that? That's like in every trading book. When you open any trading book, I've noticed in the preface, it says, when you start trading, put your bullish stocks under one and your bearish stocks under two. Now, it's just what I use to separate. And so take a second and glance over all your lists uh, and, and get pickier. So now, now I'm going through and reviewing. But here's where it really comes down to it, and this is what makes or break traders. So here's all these lists. It's it's 9.15, market's gonna open in 15 minutes. And what I need to do now is say, okay, here's all these lists. Which of these stocks are most appropriate to be trading this morning based on the market bias, based on the market timing, based on the type of setup that they have, based on where they're opening, and what kind of entry would I require in order to enter these? Those questions there are questions that the average day trader doesn't even ask or even understand for the most part. And that's that's where you make your money is understanding what I just said. Yeah, yeah, carry list is just, hey, cool sock. Let's make sure we look at it. You know what it is kind of sometimes? The carry list can be, if, if some of you, I know some of you are stock symbol hoarders. Like you ever see a show hoarders on TV? You know, where you walk in and the guy's like, he's seven feet deep in garbage and stuff in his house. Well, some of you are stock hoarders. You can't let go of a symbol, right? Who, get, who, give me a one. Who's a, who's a symbol hoarder? Give me a one. Who's a symbol hoarder? You're just afraid to take it off your screen because, oh, my God, tomorrow it might do something, right? So you end up with 7,000 things on your screen. Come on, who's a symbol hoarder? 
like a third of you are. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. I train people all the time. A lot of you are symbol hoarders, admit it. You don't want to take it off your screen, right? Because it just might make money tomorrow. So the answer to that is, well, stick it on your carry list, right? Then you're not distracted by it. You have to focus. One of my recent favorite sayings is one of those quick tips that I did. And it goes something like, it's not what you, it's not what you miss, it's what you make. So stop worrying about what you might miss and start focusing on how you make money. The bull and bear lists are just for that day of trading. Not for... Correct. This is a this is well, this is a day trading concept I'm talking about here today, but yes, the daily bullish and bearish lists are also swing trading lists. Correct. I want to emphasize this comment again because this is what trading is all about. You, you know, you can learn what you're looking for, you can learn all that, but all the above is perhaps the most important concept in day trading, and many do not even know what it means. Take a second look at your get pickier. Start to review your list in terms of market bias, uniqueness, market timing, and most importantly, is it the next slide? The top, pick the top six from all your lists that may possibly be traded at the opening half hour. Determine your entries now. Here's the big thing, everybody. Determine your entries now. The stock must come to you. This is one of my favorite sayings in day trading. The stock must come to you. When you are sitting there and it's 9.28 in the morning, you need to know exactly what your entry is going to be. Now, what if the stock doesn't do what you want it to do? Somebody tell me, what if you want the stock to do X, Y, Z, and then you'll enter it and it doesn't do that? Then what happens? Yeah, not going to trade it, right? I'm not going to go chasing it. I'm not going to go doing something to my detriment. Some of you will learn that. Some of you will take you three years to learn that for some of you because that's what happens sometimes because you just keep chasing something because you can't stand the thought of missing something, right? Which, of course, is silly, but that's what some people do. They can't stand the thought of it. I'm perfectly, you know, today was a great example. Let me read Miris. I like to carry this because it gives me a couple of stocks that can create patterns. And if the market setup is a certain way, I can go, right. Because typically the carry list is unique stuff for the most part, yeah. Making that stock come to you, making the entry be what it needs to be. Today is a great example, right? Miris is in the room. That's why he's, he's talking a lot here. And he's a very active member of the room, great trader. He, right, Miris, today, and some, some of the others are in the room with me too. Today was a great example. I have, I'm looking at it still, I love that. I had six things on the hot list today and nothing set up. Remember? Nothing set up. I didn't take a trade the opening 10 minutes. So, as a matter of fact, the thing that set up my first trade, I only did two trades today. The first trade wasn't even on the hot list, right? It was that bigger gapper, A-E-H-G or A-E-H-R. So I had six things on the hot list, all of which I required a certain entry. And guess what? None of them gave me that entry. So what did I do? What do we do the first seven minutes, Mirnas? Nothing, right? And the first thing I took wasn't even from the hot list. So that's what you have to learn to do. Now you can look back, and I have people say this to me all the time, you can look back and say, oh, Paul, you could have done that, it would have worked. I don't give a crap about what I could have done that could have worked. When you start talking like that, when you start talking like that, you're a losing trader. When you start talking about, oh, you could have done that, I don't care what I could have done. I know what I want to do. I know the setups. I know the higher odd stuff. Like I said, jokingly in a podcast I did yesterday, I said, if you want to make money, you know what you can do? You can walk along the shoulders of America's highways and looking for bags of money that were tossed out by drug dealers. You could do that if you wanted to. You could make money doing that, and somebody did. There's a story about that. Somebody made a whole lot of money doing that. But you know what? I'm not going to do that, and I'm not going to chase stocks that aren't doing what I want them to do. Of course it might work, right? Terrible odds. One in four shot. Would you take that? No. But guess what? One in four times, you're going to look back and say, oh, my gosh, I should have done that. What am I doing? When you start doing that, when you start questioning your entries, fill in the blank for me, somebody. When you start questioning your entries because you felt like you missed something, what have you done? What have you proven? When you start saying, oh, I could have done that, when I hear somebody say, oh, I could have done that, what do I know about them immediately? That they don't know what they want to do. They have no plan. They have no concept. They have no structure. If you can just look back over your shoulder and say, oh, I could have, I could have, I could have. Because I say, no, I couldn't have done that because that's not in my plan to do that. It didn't do what I wanted it to do. Until you guys learn that, you're not going to make money, period. That's right. Exactly, Frank. They're worried about what they're missing and not how to make money. Boy, did I go off on a tangent there. I hope somebody recorded that. Determine your entries now. The stock must come to you. Start to get an idea of where your hot lists are, are opening and the likely entry stop estimates to determine share size, right? Start getting that all in your head because you, you know what? 
if you're trading the open, I think the open is the highest odds time in the market. Now, I know if you go read the internet, you're going to say people, oh, don't, don't trade the open because you're going to get killed. Well, if somebody's getting killed trading the open, guess what? <laughs> right? Somebody's making that money, right? The people that are getting killed are giving the money to somebody else. I think the open is the highest odds time that there is because guess what? The higher low of the day, like 50, 60% of the time is set the opening five minutes. You, you don't want to be there for that? You, you go pull up a chart at 12, at 11.35 in the morning, and you tell me if that's going to be the higher low for the day. You won't have a clue most of the time. Guess what? 9.30, 9.35, boom, 60% of the time you see the high and low of the day right there, done. So how can that not be a higher odds period of time? It's just math. It's just common sense. What you have to do is if you're going to trade a stock the opening couple of minutes, you can't sit there and look at it and have no clue about how you want to enter it. You got some bullish stock. It takes off and you go, okay, I guess I'm going to take this stock because it looks really bullish to me. And then you start thinking, okay, well, what's my entry? Oh, gee, okay, what kind of share size is that? By the time you figure it all out, the stock's up here, you chase it up to here. And guess what? The minute you get into it, it does this. And you have like an immediate stop out because you handled it poorly. You need to know all this in your head to kind of be prepared. I never teach people you have to be fast or quick. It's not about that. And there are day trading styles where you can get up at 10 o'clock in the morning. Be perfectly fine. Some of my favorite trades are at 1030. That's kind of the end of my time. I'm at the screen. But those are some of my favorite trades. You could literally wake up in the morning at, at 945, get some coffee, do your push-ups, walk around the block, pull up to the screen and make money doing that. That's perfectly fine. I happen to like the open. And I don't think you have to be fast to trade the open, but you have to be organized. You have to be organized. That's the key thing. Agreed, Steve. Yes. For the reasons I said, and that's why I like the open. Yeah, absolutely. All right. What's the next slide? I don't know. Part of what you can help do is sometimes people say to me, and remember, I'm doing all this and I'm running a room, which sometimes interferes, you know, because I'm trying to type, I'm giving the stuff to the room first. So I got to be really ultra prepared. So I typically, I have four or five entry screens set up already. Whatever platform you're on, you can set up a whole bunch of things for entries. And you're, you're guessing at share size, but you can set up to have it set to a stop limit and whatever it is. And then you can just adjust at the last minute. But don't wait until you decide that you want to get into something and then pull up an order entry screen and start, uh, let's see, buy, buy limit, um, let me see, uh, 1,000 shares? No, how about, how about 50? You, know, you can't do that. So have this thought process ready where you're just like, okay, here we go. Bam, 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 change that to 1132. Boom, here we go. Done. Just that quick. To stay organized, what I do is that whole hot list ends up right here. That's the hot list. This is, this is one monitor kind of in the middle. I have another monitor to the right that are really back burners, and I have one to the left that's my main trading screen. But this is going to be the hot list here. And what I do very simply, and this is, again, just personal organization. You don't have to do it this way. But for me, these are longs on strength all the way across. Longs on strength. Number two, longs on weakness. Number three, kind of miscellaneous or some big, short, big rallies or buy big pullbacks. And then we get to the buys. Buy strength, buy a pullback. And then from favorite, going from left to right, the first two rows are the most favorite, so they're the hot list. And then we get into the back burners. That's how we get organized. So what does that do for me? What it does for me, I can tell jokes all morning, have everybody cracking up in the room, and just glance at these charts. And just by glancing at the chart, I know, okay, this was by a pullback. I'm, this, was, this was short weakness. There's weakness, whatever it is. So I can look quickly and not have to pull up every symbol on my trading platform because you can't trade that way. So I already have pre-screened these. I know what I want to see from each of them, and now I know where they are on my screen. Bam, bam, bam. There you go. All right. Do we use time frame you want to enter on? You can't see. Well, this, I snagged this later in the day, John. But obviously, at, at the open, there's only one time frame this could be. What would that time frame be? Because remember, these are stocks that I've already said. I've scanned. I found it on the hourly. I like it. It's now opening in the right spot. The market timing's right. The market bias is right. Boom, boom, boom. I want to find my entry. It's, only, it's, it's a one-minute chart. Yeah, it starts off a one-minute chart. And then as the day break right there, as that moves too far to the left, then I make it a two-minute chart, and then a three-minute chart, and then a four-minute chart, and then I'm probably off getting coffee by then, going out doing something. 
then they become five minute charts. And by the end of the day, I have to make them eight and eventually 15 minute charts to see what's going on. Questions on any of this? Please feel free with the questions. I'm trying to keep up a fair pace because there's just a lot of stuff here to go over. It's actually the end of Prepare for Open. This is the last slide for it. Any questions on that? So at this point now, you've been open, you're trading. If your style is that you want to trade from 10 to 11 or from 10.30 to noon, whatever it is, well, you'd just be on a little different pace. That's all. You'd, you'd be setting up stuff that's uh, going to be setting up right, and you probably would be reviewing your watch list. If you're looking for, like, pullbacks or rallies to go long or short into 10.30 reversal time, you'd probably be starting at 10 o'clock and start going through the charts that are starting to maybe set up the way you want them to and put those on your hot list. So it's whatever it is that you're looking for. It's just structure and being organized. Psych for the day, psychology for the day. Every day, leave yourself two to three minutes before the open and stop and ask yourself a few questions. Very serious about this. After doing all this work, do I have things on my screen that I cannot stand the thought of not trading, right? I have this year, I've averaged less than two trades a day. Last week, I had two trade, two days where I only had one symbol. Today, I only did two trades because I've not liked the setups, the environment, or anything else. So I'm you know, just more laid back. I've had some days, not in a while, it's probably been three, four weeks, I've had some days where I can't hit the button fast enough. I wish I had an assistant with me to you know, hit all these other stocks because I'm missing stuff because you just can't trade fast enough. So it just depends what's out there and what's setting up. A lot of times the market environment influences that, right? If the whole market is doing a wonderful setup, well, the market's the sum of all stocks, and you're going to have a lot of stocks that are doing that great setup. If the market is a mess, the average stock's going to be a mess, right? So after doing all that work, do I have things on my screen I cannot stand the thought of not trading? That's the standard. Not something I could make money at, not something that, oh, gee, I don't want to miss it, but something that just absolutely is what I want to do. This is what I do for a living. I'll take it. Or am I about to trade the best of the garbage? I was going to use a different word there because I want to trade because I'm bored. How many people have done this? Put a one on the screen if you've ever taken trades because you were just bored. Everybody's done it, right? Everybody's done it. Of course you have, right? That's your whole thing as a trader is you go back and evaluate and you say, hey, you know what? That really wasn't a trade that I am proud of. You know, that was not something that represents my trading style. That was just kind of eh. Give it a shot. I've determined um, every day, leave yourself two to three minutes to determine, I have determined exactly what the stock must do for me to take an entry, and I will do that. And, and if it does it, I, I will, without hesitation, take it. So there's two parts here. Number one, you never do something if the stock doesn't do what you need it to do. But number two, when it does it, you take it without hesitation. You don't start second-guessing yourself. You, the intelligent you, has spent time scanning, looking, searching, narrowing down, finding the right spot, finding the entry. And now that it's here, the idiot you with your mouth, finger on the mouse can't second guess that judgment, not unless something has changed, not unless you know something drastic has changed in the environment. Based on, and then the last question you're asking yourself is based on my review of trades yesterday or this week, is there anything I need to change or focus on? Here's an important question that again, I'm not saying to you specifically, or but for most new traders, they just don't get this, right? It's every day, come back, do the same thing, lose the same amount of money, come back the next day and hope something's different. Well, any decent trader is going to look and review every day and say, hey, if I didn't have a good day, maybe I just didn't have a good day. No change. But sometimes you look and you say, you know what? This market's a little different. This is a little different. I'm doing something here that's not really working out. Let's change that tomorrow. Or... Maybe you did a psychological thing. You chased something more than you should have or whatever it is. There should always be something in your mind saying, hey, I need to adjust that a little bit, right? Make sure you do that because if you don't do that, by definition, you will never improve. Step two is getting yourself to do what you know you are supposed to do. This is the definition of psychology, right? Getting yourself to do what it is that you need to do. Everybody agree with that? That's what psychology is in trading. Getting yourself to do what you need to do. If that's step two, what's step one? Step two is getting yourself to do what you know you're supposed to do. What's step one? It's kind of almost implicit. 
Yeah, knowing what to do, exactly, right? And again, the problem for most traders is they just don't know what to do. Another big kick of mine lately has been, I did an article on this and actually the podcast I did yesterday, which is coming out tomorrow, talks about this topic. And let me just hit it real quickly because I think it's really, it's become a big topic to me. And the reason I get clued into topics sometimes is because I talk to a lot of people, I help different people and I see the same pattern. And a lot of people want to step back and say all the time, oh, it's psychology. You know, I didn't get to that target and oh, I did this and I did that. But you know what the root of it usually is? It's not really psychology. It's just your chart knowledge. Because if you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> it's almost a circular argument. I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, how can you say it was a psychological issue, I didn't get it to target when you don't even know what the target should be? Right? If you have no confidence the trade is going to go anywhere and you're stopping out all the time, sure, you're going to get the stop up to minimize your loss. But is that a psychological problem or is that because you just don't know what the heck you're doing? My key thing lately has been the phrase, you don't have a right to claim a psychological issue until you prove to me you know what the heck you're doing. Does that make sense, everyone? Does that make total sense? You, you, I, nobody's bigger on psychology than me. So you don't have to tell me about psychology. I agree totally you can kill your career. But you have no right to claim psychology until you prove you know. Now, once you know what you're doing, and you can say, but I know exactly, look at it, and, and you can prove to me, yeah, boy, this, here's what I'm looking at, here's what I wanted to do. And I can say, yeah, boy, you know what? You got it nailed. You got good charts. You know what you're doing. Why didn't you do it? Well, that's psychology now. That's your fear of everything. But gotta, gotta, step one is you got to prove you have the right to even claim psychology. That's my new saying. Not everybody agrees with that. Those who disagree with me would be wrong. All right, so now the next, the last final step here is I'm gonna take you through a day in the trading room, which you know reflects what I just did. But for those of you that are in there, this is partly for some of you in the room, maybe you don't even know the stuff that happens or the reason it happens or the way it happens. If you're ever gonna be in the room, pay attention. Here's what happens in the trading room for people. So here's a picture of, this is what the room looks like if you're a room member. You, you log in and you can log in at eight o'clock these days. So you log in at eight o'clock and what you'll see is you will see a couple of posts here in the comments section. And these are links you can click on that are the watch list at that point in time. Now, typically I don't have that there yet. I'd snag this at whatever time. And there's a picture here on the screen. So when you log in, there's a picture of the watch list you can look at if you want to see my watch list or you can click on this and get a picture, or there's an Excel sheet here, some of you maybe don't know that, in case you want to copy and paste. So you can click on the Excel sheet, download it, copy and paste, put it in your platform, if you want to do that. I don't know how each of you use my lists, that's up to you. So between 8 and 8.30, the room opens, watch lists are posted, daily charts and 60 minute charts are there at that time, and Excel is posted, okay? So what happens next? Next, between 8.30 and 9, comments are posted. So between 8.30 and 9, now we're just kind of typing in the room, some of the members of the room give their list or comments that I tend to look at because they're um, kind of, you know, traders that are doing well, been around a long time. So I'll sometimes double check their comments. And then also during that time, I am preparing the gap list and the mini gappers. So I take and I add the mini gap lists and repost those. Do I have a slide for that? Oh, sorry. Of course I do. So about 8.50, and some of the room maybe don't know this, when this slide goes up, when I take down the watch list that does not have the gappers, ignore that on there, I put up this, that means I'm preparing the watch list to add the gappers. And the only reason I make a note of that is because the, the best thing, the best way for the room to function is that after I post my final list, then people look at them and say, hey, Paul, you missed this, this, or this. If you post your list with 20 things on it and I have my list of 20 things on it, well, I don't really don't wanna go through your list and look at 20 things of which 18 I already have, right? So the best thing, and I, I don't expect people to do this, but the best thing is you have your list, you look at my list and you say, hey, Paul, here's a couple things I think you'd like. Boom, there's two things. So that's the reason I post this because maybe you were just ready to put your list out there and now you know, hey, in two minutes, Paul's gonna have his list. I'll just look at his list and we'll go from there. So that sign comes up. And it's only up for a couple of minutes, five minutes, whatever, just kind of a placeholder. And then I repost the list that has the gappers. It's also posted into the room with an Excel sheet if you want to look at the Excel sheet, okay? And then at 9 o'clock, I come on the mic pretty regular, 9, 9.02, 9.03. 
and I then put the camera onto my platform and show you a section of my platform that has three charts, all the pertinent watch lists, and that's the hourly list there. So then I start going through my stuff. I start going through each of the lists, and this is where, at this point, this is where I'm forming the hot list. At this point, the hot list is blank, like it is here. And I'm now going through the daily list with the room. I'm going through the daily list, the hourly list, the gap list, and saying, here's my hot list stuff. And some of the symbols I put directly onto the back burner charts. So they're not hot list. I'm not going to trade them at the open. But they're things that maybe will set up by 10 o'clock or something like that. So I remember that's what these, if you go way back here, the hot list that I make, I'll eventually put these here. And then these here to the right on my platform, you don't, you don't see this ever, this is just my platform, the back burners go there. So these are the ones that are not on the hot list, but maybe may set up later in the day at some point. All watches are boiled down to a handful of the most likely trades, a bunch of back burners, the most likely are on the hot list, and likely entry concepts are discussed. So I do a pretty good job, I think. If you guys in the room tell me if you disagree, but I think I do a pretty good job taking the hot list things and saying, hey, here's what I'm looking for. And in doing that, we've come up with some fun terms, right? The pop and drop and different things, and it's kind of a shortcut name so you understand what I'm looking at. But I think I give you, somebody comment, agree or disagree, I think I give you a pretty good idea, five or six things I'm looking at, what I'm expecting, what I'm looking for, what my entry might be for those handful of things so that anybody who is literally trying to follow along can be prepared the best that they can. I think the best use of this room without question is somebody who knows what they're doing. Well, let me go right to the point. I think the best use in this room is somebody who has been trained at DTS by me and they have become their own trader to some degree. So they have their own things they're looking at and then they also look at my stuff. That trader should do better than me. Why? Because I just have me. That's all, that's all I got. I just got me. Somebody in the room who's become a very good trader has their very good trading style and they can kind of check in what I'm doing, right? And they can look at something I decided to do and they say, oh, Paul, you're kind of wacky today. I'm not going to do that. Or you can say, oh, wow, Paul, what a great idea. I love it. I'm going to do that. So I think they end up being the absolute best out of anybody. Some people just like to follow along and some people are there just to get some ideas. It's well structured and easy to follow, even though it's quick, you get plenty of time. Thank you. But, and, and to kind of follow up on that, I did an article a while back. I did an article that some of you have probably seen, but I'd just like to throw the link out there to you because it talks about using a trade. Because I had some people say to me, they come to the room and they say, you know what, Paul, I really don't like being in the room because I do my own thing and I get distracted by you. And I understand what they're saying, but I don't think that's the right attitude. Nobody should be distracted by me. Nobody should be distracted because if you know what you're doing, you're not distracted. At the very least, it can, it can be a sounding board. Boy, that's a long link. But anyways, there it is. So there's something fun to read. Just click on that and put it away for later. So here we go. We're all set. Hot list ready. We're all set, ready to go. Market's ready to open. Boom, right? I think market opens next, right? It is likely there's going to be at least one hot list stock traded the opening five minutes for me. That's my trading style. I, I, I like that. And if I have six or seven things that are possibilities, it's highly likely one of those are going to meet the requirements of what I like to do. I want you to think for a minute about what we just went through to get to this point I'm taking the first trade. To just sit back and think a minute about what I call getting odds in your favor. Compare this to what you may have envisioned or what somebody else may have told you to do to trade. I've looked at, at this point, I've looked at 12, 13, 1400 stocks. I've boiled it down to 30, 35 things on my screen. I boiled that down to five or six things that are the hot list things. Those five or six things, I've created a scenario that has to happen for me to enter them. And now one or two of those may meet that scenario. I mean, you're, you're getting it down to exactly what I want. Now, maybe on some days I didn't want the right thing, right? Maybe I found the greatest short in the world and the market skyrocketed higher and took everything with it. But the structure to do that, I think, is what's so terribly important that, you know, I don't think a lot of people do properly. So likely to have a trade opening five minutes. Um, sometimes the list or market conditions will dictate waiting. Now, Again, as part of your market bias, a big part of that is not just bullish or bearish, it's when. There's times where I want to be bearish at the open. There's times I want to be bearish at 10 o'clock or at lunch. There's times I want to be bullish at the open. There's times I want to be bullish at 10 o'clock or at lunch. That's critically important. The exception to following that rule of the market bias would be what? What would be the exception to following the market bias? Most of you know the answer to this. 
and I mentioned the term a couple of times. Right, unique stock, stock on their own page, exactly, right. A stock that you've determined to be completely on its own, either because of the prior pattern or because it's gapping that day, and you've determined, you know what, the stock just doesn't care where the market's going, right? The, the greater the market move, the less things truly become on their own page. In other words, you have a bullish, unique stock, and the market's just a little weak in the morning. It's not going to care. It, you'll say you have 10 stocks that you think are uniquely bullish, right? And the market's just a little bearish. Yeah, all 10 will probably be fine. But the more the market gets more and more bearish, the more some of those 10 are going to peel off and maybe not fulfill your desires of being unique. And maybe it's down to eight, seven. There'll always be some, some really great unique stocks will always stay unique, but more and more will peel off. So you got to use that kind of combination of how unique, how much market bias. How the stocks must have an exact entry, market bias, market timing, all trades are posted in the room in real time and then posted on the big board. So if you're in the room, I am doing this verbally. I'm very clearly calling out what I'm thinking of and very, making very clear. And then at the same time, I'm typing it into the room like down here. I didn't, didn't snag an example that, but I'm typing into the room down here. And, and that's the official thing is what hits the room. But then in addition to that, I go back and I add it to what I call the big board. And that's just a summary of what I'm doing that has the entry, the exits. And then from here, I also stop, start updating potential stop, um, hires or lowers, updating targets, updating took a target, didn't take a target. So if you leave and come back, you can just glance at this board and see what's going on. I always emphasize that there's a mistake between the room and the board. The, the room is what matters. The board is a courtesy that I keep up for everybody. At some point, oh, did I? Did, 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 did. Yep, so once Paul's hot list is exhausted, the rest of the list is reviewed. So we're talking, I was 10, 10, 30, looking around, nothing else to do. So now what I'd like to do is to get my open positions into what I call walk away mode. There's, a, there's an event that I did called walk away, the walk away. Uh, it's on the platinum section now for those of you that are platinum. And it's a good one to follow up to this. It talks about what I look for in that. But basically what I want to do is I just want to get my open positions in a spot where I'm going to say, you know what, maybe I've adjusted a stop, not prematurely, but it just a stop needed to come up. Maybe I took a target on something. The ideal concept for me on walk away mode is to maybe worst case scenario, if I have two or three full or partial positions open is to say, you know what, if I come back in two hours, the worst thing would be I'm down one R. That would be the ideal walk away or to be break even would be even better. And on the other side, I could be up infinity. Who knows? That's where I want to be. So I try and get things set for that. And then I walk away typically. Big board, I come back, depending upon what I feel the market pattern is for the day. I may be gone till lunch. I may take off an hour. Depends what I think is going on. I put a sign up that tries to give people a, a good idea of what I'm feeling for the day, right? Pattern unclear, check later. Well, sometimes that sign may say trades are likely later. That's when we're waiting for something. If it's a day where I'm just not sure if I'm going to have another trade coming or not, I'll put market uh, pattern unclear. There are some days where I do not see the possibility for later trades. Example, I shorted that day. The market began to fall and it's still falling, right? I'm not going to go long in a downtrending market. It's already too far down to continue to chase short. Chances are I'm done for the day. So I'll put up a sign that says likely done for the day. And then there'll come a sign later sometimes that says I am done when positions close out, the room closes, whatever. All right. So I think you have a real good sense being in the room of exactly how the day is going, what happens. Depending upon the day, I return, check in. I'll type on the screen and say, okay, changing the stop on this. I'll update the big board, as I call it, uh, when appropriate to reflect any changes in the open positions. Big board continues to be updated. And the big board looks like that. This is today's big board. There it is right there. So there is today's big board. So up here is a summary of the entry. So at 9.38, AEHR was posted as a short under uh, 1939 stop over 2050. At some point, the stop was brought down to 1956. I ended up taking a target on that. I trailed it. I snagged this before close, but I snagged a target at 1926. And then U was taken at 3650, uh, over 3657, stop 3625. And all target taken at 3709. If you look at that chart, that chart went five times past that. 
but I had an hour and a half in five minutes or something. It just flew when I got into it. So I call that the free money and I don't look back and I'm not sorry about it. That's what the big board looks like updated. So everything's, you know, right there. And anybody who wants to kind of follow along can do so if they choose to do so. At uh, Market Coel, I, I post a trade summary then that it depends where I am. Some people wonder why it comes out. Some, if I'm sitting at the computer at four o'clock, I'll, I'll post it then typically. A lot of times I'm at the computer at four o'clock and I can't post it if I'm remote on my phone, whatever. So I, it may get posted when I get back or sometimes it won't, you won't see it till the next day if I'm not back until later. The post looks something like that. That's this week so far where you got a summary of all the trades, profit for the trades, everything going on. And that's, of course, post in the room so you can pick it up the next day. Questions, comments, time for questions or comments. Things going on. I'm going to send an email about this, so read that if you want. I'm not going to go through the discussion of it again, but a lot of people are enjoying what has become the new kind of thing at DTS is a platinum membership. It's very cheap. It's a couple hundred dollars for the forever lifetime. And the best way I can describe it is, I would say, is a stepping stone for somebody who is not yet ready, willing, or able to go through the seminar program. So it's the right thing to do. People who come to me and say, hey, Paul, I want to take your courses, but I'm, I'm not ready for a year. I need to save money, whatever it is. What I've been asking them to do is, is don't go poking around and self-teach yourself on the Internet because it's, it's nothing but bad news when you do that. Everything has to be unlearned. So the thing to do would be to hang around DTS. The free stuff page has a lot of information. If you want to get tons more beyond that, become a platinum member. You can see all the um, you can see all the benefits there on the sign-up page or all listed there if you want to do that. And uh, what else? I'm going to send an email around about when the podcast comes out tomorrow. I'll send another email about podcasts. I can't believe the response from getting to podcasts. I mean, to me, it's great because these are all people that don't know me, and uh, it's just been unbelievable to me how many people are listening to the podcast and saying, "Hey, you know what I get from everybody." It's, you know, I get so many people that are, you know, I'm really disgusted with trading, but I heard you talk and, and I, I feel a new life or whatever it is because you're just an OBS person. So I've been getting a lot of that from people that because there's just so much garbage out there, I guess. Is this recording going to be on the free stuff? Every recording, Jeff, um, every recording goes to the free stuff page for like I keep two on there, the recent two. So you can always just go to the free stuff and if you keep up with everything, right? The Platinum has everything going back beyond the last two for six years. So people who want to kind of make an effort to really study and that type of thing and to, to learn from what I've done in the past, that, that's, that's for them. If you're just casual, you're cool, and you're here every week, just pick it up on the Free Stuff page. I think psychology doesn't count if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, thank you, David. Yeah, and again, I, it's something that I've never used that line until the last, last couple of weeks. I mean, as long as I've been around, it never struck me. I mean, if you asked me, yes, I would know that. But to like to come out and teach that and say, wait a minute, all you guys, you're all saying psychology, but wait a minute, you don't even know what you're doing. You don't have a right to claim that. And that only comes up because somebody asks the question, right? <laughs> somebody says to me, or somebody comes to me and says, Paul, I'm having all kinds of psychological problems. And they send me a few trades. And I'm like, well, you're not, you don't have a psychological problem. You have a trading problem. You don't know what you're doing. I'd have a psychological problem too if I was taking your trades. I'd probably just jump out the window because they're crazy. Boom, boom, that's it, right? Anything else? Any questions, anybody? I'm good as long as you want to sit here. I think most B&E traders are in denial. Of... Yeah, David, you are so, so right. I mean, you are so right. And I'm going to keep pushing that this year, and I know some of you may get sick of me saying it because, it, you know, I, I, I don't really care anymore. You know, when I first started, let me say this, when I first started DTS, I was bashful about even saying it in a seminar program. You know, I don't want to sound like a salesperson. and no, I just figure people figure it out. And then I had people who go through the course and they're like, Paul, this is just, this is phenomenal. This blew me away. And some people have asked me, why don't you, why aren't you more vocal about it? And I got, and I changed the last couple of years. I'm like, you know what? This is really good for people. And I don't care what you think I'm doing. You need to take a great seminar program. I, I don't know anything better than what I do at any price. So if you want to go find something else, that's great. I encourage people, if you, or you don't like me and you see something else on the internet, please swing it by me. I'll gladly talk to you about it. I know some of the stuff out there. I, I know some of the people out there. A lot I don't. I'm sure there's good people out there. I, I don't know everybody. But I also know there's some real scams out there, some outright liars, cheats, and frauds. Any questions about trading or anything that really matters? 
The other thing I want to encourage people to do is if you have, and a lot of people do these days, if you have one or two mornings free between 9 and 11, I suggest you just get in there and try it out for a month. Get in there and, you know, even just see what we're doing, you know, take a couple real small trades and just see how you like it. A little extra money from sitting there a couple hours, a couple days a week. Most people, a lot of people work from home, have their own business, can structure their time in such a way that they could be available. If you can, that's the way to do it. You don't quit a job and day trade. You start day trading while you're working and work into it slowly. See ya. Good night. I think Joanne has a good night. It's time for good night. All right. Have a good night, everybody.